is a you can do this at your own speed so if you need to come back later and stop and rewind and whatnot you can B, you can create on it however you want. You can use any colors you want. They don't have to be pink flowers. They can be anything, really. And then also you can use any materials that you have at your disposal. I don't want you to limit yourself. If you don't have acrylic paint, you can't do it. Um, you know, go ahead. I've had people send me crayon drawings and watercolor paintings and all kinds of stuff. They've gotten really creative with it. Just use what you have around the house around the house and have fun with it and this isn't like a serious lesson we're not trying to be picasso by the end of it or you know michelangelo or something we're just here to have fun so get as creative as you want add things take things away change colors etc so if everyone will just give me just a second i'm trying to get the video uploaded on my computer so that i can see any questions or comments and I will do my best to answer anything. Also, yeah, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Hey, Crystal. And also, if you enjoy this lesson, please consider sending a super chat or a, a super sticker or a PayPal donation, because that really helps too. Hey, Heather, hey, Veronica. All right, give me just another second. Who is ready with all their materials and just ready to go? <laughs> hey, Joanne. Also, where is everybody watching from? Let me know. That's always fun. I'm in Los Angeles for those who don't know. I know uh, kind of newer to some people, especially people from Facebook. Okay, good. I have it pulled up on my computer and I am ready to go. So I'm gonna explain my materials real quick. We're ready from Indiana, from Ontario, Canada, Illinois. That's awesome, you guys. That's really cool. I'm very excited. Okay, so we're using, um, I'm using acrylic paint and I'm just using the Craftsmart acrylic paint from Michaels. So like really just use anything you have. Those are usually what I use when I teach paint nights. Um, they're just, very easy, but feel free to use better paints if you want, or worse paints, use your temper or whatever. I'm using, hey Tina, I'm using three brushes. So I have a foam brush, which I'll be doing the background with. That's a one inch foam brush. I have a, I think this is a half inch flat brush. And then just a little detail liner brush. And of course, I'll explain to you how and when we're gonna use these as we go along. And I'm just using the colors in this picture, which is white, blue, um, green, pink, yellow, and black. So use any colors you want. Let's get started. Yes, guys, don't forget to thumbs up, please. Okay, starting with the foam brush, we're gonna avoid the circle in the middle here where you want your sun to go especially with this paint and because we're not really stopping and letting things dry. Hey, Clara, um, you're, you can't really do yellow over blue very well. You will get green unless you do several layers of paint. So just, we're gonna avoid that section. Um, for now, I'm gonna put some white here, just starting with a circle of white. Hopefully you guys can see that. For anyone that didn't, wasn't here at the previous one, I am reusing canvases. <laughs> So if it looks like this white is different from the canvas, it is. And then same foam brush. We want to do this all while it's wet. I'm going to go outside that, outside of wherever my sun is going to be. It does not have to be a perfect circle. Just do your best. And then we're going to keep going out with the blue. I like to add a little white as I go as well because I want a really light blue. And we're gonna go all the way out to the edge with this. So I'm adding a little more white even. I want this to be a nice spring day, not a night time. And you can have it as blended or not blended as you want. That's totally up to you. Guys, of course, do not forget to let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm gonna scooch this over a little. 
Yep, we've got a lot of fun people in the house. Who has, oh, it's, I'm on the West Coast. Everybody else has probably been up for hours. <laughs> Who else is rocking that just rolled out of bed look? <laughs> okay. I'm going to go a little more blue. So it can be a little darker on the outside. The key to the blending is to do it while it's still wet. And also adding the white as you go really helps. So it doesn't just lighten, it helps to blend. So watch this. If you see that this is a line here, it's kind of pretty divided. If I take a little bit of white on my brush and go in the middle here, it's gonna just blend it right out. And you no longer have a line there. So that's just a little trick. Do that as much or as little as you want. Aw, thanks, Joanne. <laughs> oh, hey, Mary, you're in California too. Good. <laughs> Tina said, is one of those fixing to be my Mother's Day gift? Sure. Um, Heather, I'm not sure yet. Heather asked, are you going to be doing harder levels of painting live? I'm not sure yet. Um, because those are definitely longer, like those would probably be about an hour long video or maybe even longer. So I'm thinking about it, but I'm not totally sure. Okay, now we're gonna go with same brush. You don't have to wash anything. We're gonna go on the bottom. I'm gonna flip my canvas over so it's easier. But I'm doing green on the bottom here and kind of filling in this bottom circle and I want it to come up around the sides. You can do that as much or as little as you want. Yeah, it's gonna blend with the blue a little bit because we didn't let it dry, but that's okay. We're just giving kind of a curved ground. Just doing like, you know, green rainbow, I guess. <laughs> just going the curved. It takes maybe a little practice. And there we go. So that is our background. I'm going to let that sit and dry for just a second while you guys, um, you know, get yours all done. Let me know in the comments, please, if you are done and ready for the next step or you need another minute. What's for lunch? I don't know, I haven't even had breakfast yet. I'm just enjoying my coffee. <laughs> Ooh, Clara said, start spinning the art and you could hypnotize everybody. Buy my art, buy my art. That sounds like a good plan. But my spinner is broken and I need to get another one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go on to the next step. Um, the next step I'm going to do with a small detail brush. We're This is still wet around here, so we're going to leave this part for a little bit later to add the sun. Taking the little detail brush into the green, and we're going to make the stems. Bye, Clara. So I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not nine stems there. You know, I usually say do somewhere in between like seven and 11, you, you know, depending on how many, you can add as many or as little as you want. And we're just making a line with the green. Good news here is you don't really need a straight line. Wavy is totally fine. And just do different heights and not only different heights, do different spacings because otherwise it just looks like a weird pattern. Um, so see how these are spaced a little further. Some are a little closer. So just add in different heights and different spacings so you don't get a pattern. That's what we want to try to avoid. So here I have a tall, a little further apart, small, medium, etc. Hello from Sweden. Hi from MD. Welcome, guys.
And if you're hearing random noises in the background, I do have the two cats running around. Okay, while we're here, let's do this. Who has a YouTube channel that they would appreciate if more people would go check out and subscribe to? If you are, uh, comment, I have a channel or me. Actually, just comment me. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. And then if anybody wants to, they can go and support them and subscribe to their channel. I will go after the video and check out everybody's channels and make sure I get subscribed if I'm not already. But I think during this time, we really, really need to support each other. And I know a lot of people are kind of taking this opportunity to grow their social medias up. So, all right, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I kind of do the the tall ones because we haven't avoided, we haven't added the sun. So I'm kind of not putting anything over there. I'm sorry, I should have said that earlier. I didn't really think about it. Okay. Put a little guy over here. And just for funsies, I'm gonna add like a real short one. There and right here. Ha ha, okay. <laughs> Good. All right. So now we're going to go on to what would be the leaves. These are kind of, I call them like Tim Burton style or curly cues. So we're just going from the stem and just doing a little curl. And do a few of those going down depending on how long your stem is. Some of them you might just do one. Others, you might do two or three or four. They can overlap. Don't stress too much about it if they do. And once again, try to do a little bit in differences of heights and stuff. I definitely put these ones closer together than those ones. And oh my goodness, I don't think I said, but I have an 11 by 14 canvas. Sorry about that. All right. Bye, Tina. Yeah, guys, so if if anybody is interested, please go ahead and, and show anybody that has a channel some love. You can click on their name and it says, go to channel, and that will just take you to their channel. And you can subscribe. And for those of you who don't know, you need a thousand subscribers just to monetize. So I think if some people can get hit that goal over the next few weeks while they're home, that would be amazing. Okay, almost done. Angie uh, asked, do I have an Instagram? Yes, it is at Mix Media Girl. Um, I think though, if you just type in Mixed Media Girl on Instagram, it probably should pop up. I keep the pictures consistent. So it should have, it'll, my profile picture will say Mixed Media Girl with my logo. Yeah. Hello, Jesse Hansen. All right, if everybody could let me know in the chat box where you stand on your stems and leaves. Okay, Becky SB asked, I have a painting I did and want to redo it. Um, what's the best way to cover it up? Um, I use, uh, I usually just spray it with paint and primer, but you can just cover it with regular acrylic paint. Kitten, do you want to say hi? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I, I just take mine outside and I spray it. I spray it with a flat paint and primer um, because otherwise the painting's too slick. <laughs> the paint won't stick to it as well. All right, now we're going to go on to our sun. So I'm taking my medium flat brush and we're going in the yellow. 
And this is where you need to do your best to add a good circle. If you, you know, want to cheat and put a, a, a round object there and draw around it, no one will ever know. Um, I use my flat round brush and I push it down and I go in a circular pattern. That kind of helps. So we want to fill in all the white and you're going to overlap the blue just a little bit. Theoretically, by now, your blue should be dry. This acrylic paint dries really fast. So unless you're putting your paint on really thick, the paint should be dry and you should not have any issues. If it's not fully dry, you can always come back and do yet another layer later with the yellow. Just keep in mind some of our flowers will probably go over it. So, all right, I think I'm gonna make just a little bit bigger. I like a nice big sun. All right, I do, do tend to get pretty concentrated on my circles. Okay, <laughs> I think that's good. Sure, Angie, no problem. I'm gonna just write it here. Also, so that's my mixed media girl handle. Uh, Danny Ella said, my canvas is dark, not white. Can I do it anyways? You can just realize, depending on the paint you're using, the colors are going to come out a little bit different. So this is thin paint. This is just a craft paint. Um, so you can see the canvas through it. So if you have a black canvas, you're going to see that through it and it's going to affect the colors. So you can either paint it white or just go in there knowing that it's going to affect the colors and not stress about it. Either way. Okay, so next step, we're gonna go on to the flowers. You can use any colors that you want for the flowers. You can even use multiple colors if you wanna use a variety. I'm rinsing my small detail brush because that's what I'm gonna use for these. And we're gonna start by adding, going into our yellow and just at the top of every stem, add a little yellow circle. Does not have to be perfect. Do not spend too much time on this. Just a little yellow circle. Okay, good. Now my green is still pretty wet. <laughs> I also have a dripping sun. So I'm gonna actually, we're gonna just take a break for like a minute because if I try to go in there with the pink, pink and green don't really mix very well. So we're gonna just give it a second to dry. All right, <laughs> this is, a little hard to do these online because I can't see you guys and I can't see where you are at on your painting. So let me know down in the comments if you're at the same stage I am or if you're getting caught up or if you're just watching for fun, that's fine too. And if you did tune in late, you can either try to catch up really quick, but we are almost done, or you can just watch it on replay later. Either way, totally fine. One flower was missed. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> My bad. Okay. <laughs> Boom, got it. Yep. 
I would have caught it when we were filling in the flowers. Maybe that, maybe a kid picked that flower. Who knows? <laughs> okay. All right, we're just going to brave it and I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. So rinsing my little detail brush out again. If you are watching this on the replay and doing it from home, I do suggest waiting in between layers a bit to dry. So I'm gonna go in with my pink and I'm doing the same thing as with the center. I'm just going around the yellow and adding some pink circles. And you should be able to get about five of them in there. If not, they are either too small or too little. So if you're getting a lot more than five, then make them a little bit bigger. If you're getting a lot less, then make them a little bit smaller. But it's also your painting, so feel free to do any kind of flower that you want. Hi, Jojo. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of these. Now realize some of my green is wet, so it might blend a little. I'm not gonna stress too much about it. That can give cool colors anyways. Make it a little bit different. So just going around here. I am going a little bit fast just for the video purposes, but take your time. And when your flowers are closer together, like I did mine here, you will notice that, of course, you're going to have overlap. Don't stress too much about that. When we add in, we're going to add in the little black details. That's going to help with that a bit. We're basically going to just outline them. Here, it's going to mix with the yellow. That's okay. So we have a very rare rusty siding. Let's see, hold on. Come here, Bubble. Rusty is slightly antisocial. Here, say hi. Look, look right here. <laughs> Rusty's like, what are you doing? Anyways, this is my other cat. He's coming over to investigate. So it doesn't hurt to take a cat break. Oh, now the kitten wants in. Kitten's like, what are you doing? Say hi. Look right here. Right here. Man, you guys. Not the best at cooperating. <laughs> she saw me picking up Rusty and was like, what are you doing? Okay. Back to the flowers. I think all we need are cats and art. And maybe some coffee, you know. And that, that'll do it for most people. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is definitely the longest part. <laughs> Trying to get all these cuts. This is, this is why now a mental note for a live video to do less flowers. <laughs> um, so for the grownups here, okay, everybody's grown up anyways. Who would like, um, I could do probably a live wine glass painting video. Would anybody be interested in that? Or maybe a vase painting video, and I mean hand painted, not poured, hand painted. Um, let me know if that sounds more interesting, and this is more um, intermediate, I guess, but still pretty basic. If you guys would be interested in live hand painted um, wine glasses, vases, or if the canvas is interest you more, let me know. So I'll show you an example of a wine glass real quick. This is one of the wine glasses that I have, it's a cherry blossom. Even if you don't drink wine, it can be a fancy water glass or it can be um, I was actually just using it as a floating candle holder. <laughs> it's 
So that's one of the wine glasses. And then I'm going to show you a vase. One second, guys. This is one of the vases that I do, which is really good for spring. Um, the thing with these, though, is that you do kind of need specific paint. So for these, I use enamel paint. This is full card enamel. You'll see it has the wine glass specifically on there because it's designed for glass. So that's kind of my concern. But especially with the vase, you could point, paint it with anything and then just seal it well. So, OK. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Good, so it looks like there's some interest in there. Um, Angie, feel free to email me or message me. I'm not sure how to do that exactly, but, oh, Jennifer, that's awesome. Jennifer said that she has my Daisy base. Cool. Yeah, I love painting those. All right, we're gonna go on to the next step. We're almost done here. So I'm taking my little detail brush with some of the black and I'm gonna go around the yellow in the middle here. And then I'm gonna just do little lines coming out from that. And I'm going in between the petals here. So that kind of just gives it a little bit of separation. Now mind you, my paint is all still very wet. You can also fully outline with black if you want. Totally up to you. And you can also skip the black if you want to. All right, that one came out a little bit sloppy. Okay. So please, 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 guys, let me know the timing that works best for you. How many people do we have here that are from, um, from the UK or like anywhere overseas, not in the US? Because I'm really interested in that. I've set up this one specifically for someone from the UK that asked me. And I'm kind of wondering if they even are here because I don't remember who asked me. <laughs> But, um, okay, Angie said, how do you get your paint to stay vibrant and bright so they don't dim when dry? Honestly, I don't really worry about it. I just, if, if you want it to be brighter when dry, just go ahead and seal it. And that will usually make the colors pop right back out again. Well, that one had six petals. Interesting, okay. All right, we've got Danny here from Germany. Yeah, I think because these are wet, I'm just going to go ahead and outline them. Why not? I usually, uh, when I'm teaching kids to paint, I avoid black. I usually will totally skip the black because otherwise they just... <laughs> It gets all messy. Okay, Angie, what kind of paint are you using and what are you talking about with acrylic pouring specifically? If so, what kind of medium are you using as well?
Okay, there we go. I use one more, I do one more step down here, which is back with the foam brush and the green. And we're just gonna add in some grass. So for that, and you can do this with just a flat brush too. I just start at the bottom and just lightly go up. And that will create these grass-like lines. And this adds a little more interest. Oh, kitten, stop. And it's very easy. There you go. That's it. So that's it for the actual steps. You can go, of course, do the <laughs> do the outsides. You can sign it. You can add birds or anything else that you want. Um, if you don't want to outline them, I do recommend spacing them out a little bit better, like I did over here. But it looks really cute either way, I think. And there you go. Okay, so that's the end of the painting lesson. I think uh, we have some different questions. So I will stay around and answer any questions about acrylic pouring for a second. Or I guess any other questions. But if you are done with this, you can turn off the video and that's it. Okay, so Angie, acrylic gesso medium is not a pouring medium. If you're talking about acrylic pouring, you don't pour with gesso. Gesso is like a primer. It's basically like underwear for your paint is what I call it. Um, and then folk art and apple barrel. Folk art's pretty good in general, but if you're using craft paint, which apple barrel is, um, the craft paint will be much more dull. So I don't recommend using craft paint. I use the Artist Loft or Liquitex Basics is good. Those have bright colors. And then for pouring medium, I use Floetrol. Uh, but you can use, um, you know, Liquitex as a pouring medium, DecoArt as a pouring medium, a bunch of places have pouring mediums now. So it's it, the quality of your materials is definitely going to affect things. I have done paint pouring with Craftsmart, um, and those came out really dull. Also, if you pour with glue, it might come out a little more dull. So different things are going to affect that. Okay, guys, please do not forget to thumbs up. Also, uh, super chat or super sticker if you enjoyed this, or feel free to do a PayPal donation. That's kind of considered my tip jar, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, totally get that, Angie. Um, any other questions before I sign off? Real quick. Going once, going twice. Kitten. Shh. <laughs> All right. I thank you guys so, so, so much for joining me. And I will see you all next time. <laughs> Bye, guys.